Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixin Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and making it a brilliant one. And if not, know that you can turn it around anytime you wish. By the way, did you watch the latest video on Photoshop 2022 new features? If you have watched the video and if you do read the comments, there was one particular comment that got my instant attention. It was from someone from Adobe and it read, Unmesh, thanks for the great instant review of the latest Photoshop. I was hoping you'll review our depth blur one more time. We really worked hard on it to make it better after your first review a couple months ago. Give it a try. Alexandru from Adobe. Well, thank you so much, Alexandru. And this video is dedicated to you. And by the way, I felt like I owed Adobe one because the last time you and I explored this feature, we discovered a lot of limitations like extremely long wait times for every little change we make inaccurate masking, inconsistent results, and also most importantly, we couldn't even use that feature practically. In this video, we'll find out have they overcome these limitations, how much better is this, and can we actually finally use it in our workflows. We're going to do some rigorous testing and also we'll compare it against Luminar's Boca AI and see how that holds up. Stay till the end because we're going to cover some of the biggest concerns that you need to watch out for. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop 2022 and first of all, let's talk about a new switch that has been added to Depth Blur. By the way, to access Depth Blur, we need to go to Filter and then Neural Filters. Let's scroll down, select Depth Blur and turn it on. That's all. Now, did you notice something? It's processing on device. We'll talk about that later. But for now, have a look. It has been amazingly improved if you compare it to the previous version. Now, if you scroll down right here, you will discover this new button called Focus Subject. First of all, let's zoom in and take a look at the outline around the subject. It looks so perfect. So without this, if I just increase the blur strength all the way to the right hand side, have a look what happens. So this just doesn't look right. However, if I scroll up and try to focus just on the subject by clicking on the subject, see what happens. Still, it's not as good. The hands are out of focus. The face is in focus, but the outline is so jaggedy. I don't know if that's a word, but you get my point. Now, if you look at the legs, you will also notice that it's kind of out of focus. So to make the entire subject in focus and that too precisely, I think they're using the select subject engine. I don't know, I'm not sure. So if you just scroll down and you choose focus subject, have a look, this instantly improves. Look at the outlines, look at the focus, it's stack sharp. If you scroll down, have a look at the legs, it's stack sharp. There are some errors here and there, we'll get to that later, but for now, it is much better than the previous version. Now let's compare the quality improvements in comparison to the previous version. So this is Photoshop 2021, the previous version. And as you can tell, the quality is not as good. And it took a lot of time to process. Again, we're going to get to that later. Have a look at the abrupt changes right over here. Look, it's just not realistic. Also, look at how it has focused on the subject. It's all blurry around the edges and it's also not accurate as well. Couple areas of the subject are already blurred and there's no focus subject button or checkbox right here as well. Even if you try to click on the subject on the lady's head and try to focus that, again, it's taking time because it's processing in the cloud. See, it's even more inaccurate. And there are a couple areas of the car also blurred and it just doesn't look right. And these abrupt changes as well. Let's compare it to the newer version. Back to Photoshop 2022. And here we already have the old depth blur processing as a layer so that we can compare it with the new one. So let's make a copy of the background layer and place it at the very top. Let's name it new depth layer. Now let's go to filter neural filters. Simply turn on depth blur, make sure focus subject is checked and I'm going to take the blur strength all the way to the right hand side. You can choose to output it to a new layer or the current layer, even have it as a smart filter. So I'm just going to choose current layer and hit OK for ease of comparison. All right. So this, my friend, is the new depth blur. Have a look how much refined the edges are and it all looks so much better. Now let's compare it with the previous version. So this is the new version. This is the previous version. So inaccurate here and there, so abrupt. But the newer version, it just looks so much more refined and much better. If you're someone who was concerned about privacy, internet connection, internet speeds, and overall the speed of the plugin, or I might say the slowness of the plugin or the feature, I have good news for you. The first one is, if you apply depth blur right now in 2022, have a look, it's processing on device. It's no more processing in the cloud. So that's one. Also, it's much faster than it's on the cloud. So we're going to do a test with this image. And these are the time differences between processing in the previous version and the newer version. 
And as you can clearly tell, there's a night and day difference. Now let's talk about a feature that has been added to this feature that even Luminar doesn't have. My friends at Luminar, you guys really need to add this. All right, and that feature is adding grain. Adobe thinks I might not like them, I criticize them all the time, but the thing is I do give them credit where credit is due. All right, so let's turn on depth blur. As you can see, there's a lot of noise in this image, right? And if we simply add background blur here, the background just won't look right because there's still noise in the subject, but the background is blurred, so there's no noise there. So how do we match it up with that of the subject? Very simple, first of all, let's increase the blur strength to have more background blur. Now let's scroll down, and then there's this new slider, which was not there in the previous version, and that is grain. Let's take it all the way to the right-hand side, and now have a look. It's processing right now. And it's pretty fast. Now, oh, look, it's matching so well with that of the subject. What it does is that it tries to compensate for the noise that it had lost for all the blurring that it did so that it matches with the areas which are not blurred and still have the noise. I hope that made sense. Now, let's take a look. Have a look, it's matching so much better. Now, I wish there was a slider for color noise as well because there's a lot of color noise on the subject which is not in the background. I'm absolutely nitpicking, but it's very, very good to have slider. So here we have opened the same image in Luminar AI and we can increase the portrait bokeh AI or in other words, the background blur. And it's much faster in my opinion. But anyway, there is no option, if you zoom in, no option to match the noise of the subject with that of the background. As you can see, there is no noise in the background. There's a lot of noise in the subject and there's no slider here to match that up. Another new slider that has been added inside this feature is tint. Again, this is not in Luminar. So you can change the tint to whatever you wish. So you can make it more magenta. You can make it more green. That's up to you. See, as we have made it a little more magenta. And you can create some interesting moods for that. We won't go that far a little bit is okay. Have a look how beautifully both the background blur and the tint are working together to separate the subject from that of the background. So again, tint is new. The new depth blur, although much improved, has a couple issues that might be very concerning in certain scenarios. Let's start with the first one. So in this case, as you can see, we have added a depth blur, but it has some serious halo issues around the subject. Now, even if I go ahead and check focus subject, it's like it has blurred the entire image and then just pasted the sharp subject over it. Look at the halos around these areas. Look at the halos around her hair. Any highlight areas, you will begin to see halos. Look at the halo around the bell. Now, I know it has not done perfect masking. Even Luminar doesn't when it comes to super confusing things like wires and stuff. But again, there's so many halos here and there, and it's also very tricky to remove. We're going to get to that later, but for now, it has some serious halo issues. Here we are in Luminar AI, and let's turn on Portrait Boca AI. And as you can clearly see, there are no halo issues. No matter where you look, again, the masking might not be perfect. But the great thing is you can work on this. We'll get to that later. But for now, know that there is no halo. That's pretty amazing. The way Luminar handles halos is just brilliant. You never see them. However, in Photoshop, you see them from time to time. One other major problem with Depler is that the selections are very, very hard. So here's the before. Here's the after. Background blur looks nice. But if you have a look at the hair, look, there is no refined hair done here. Even Photoshop has its own technology for refining hair, selecting hair so beautifully and that too automatically. Even then, if you look at the hair, it's all hard edges. Have a look at the hair right here. Have a look at the hair right here as well. It's just not proper. So we can clearly say that hair and fur are not the new depth blur's strongest points. So here we are in Luminar AI, and although the masking here is not very perfect, I'm turning the Boatred Boca AI on, still, the hair selection is so much better than that of Photoshop. If you zoom in right here, you would notice that it's not perfect to the strand, but it just looks way more natural than that of Photoshop. At least it doesn't have hard edges when it comes to hair and fur. So there's technology already there inside of Adobe for refining hair, selecting hair. I don't know, I don't know much about code, I might be wrong, but I think we can use that technology inside of Tepler. The next comparison is a personal preference. Turns out there's a difference in bokeh quality between Portrait Bokeh AI of Luminar AI and Tepler of Photoshop. So here we have the original image. This is done with Photoshop's depth blur. And this is with Portrait Bokeh AI of Luminar. Let's turn that on and take a look. If you ask me personally, the Portrait Bokeh AI's 
background blur kind of looks more natural to me and looks more appealing to me. And also, if you have a look at the masking, I didn't do any change in the masking. This is depth blur masking. This is portrait bokeh AI masking. See, depth blur completely erased that area. Portrait bokeh AI kind of kept it. Now, there are certain little things that need improvement, but we're going to get to that later. But for now, this is Luminar and this one is Photoshop. Let me know which one looks better to you in the comments. Now, one major advantage that Depthler has, that is, it can select subjects which are not just humans. Whereas in Portrait Boca AI, it only can focus on people. So in this case, here we have a dog. And if we just turn on Depth Blur and make sure Focus Subject is checked, increase the blur strength, you would notice that it focuses the dog pretty darn well. Whereas with Luminar's Portrait Boca AI, it just won't detect it. Only people. Have a look. If you open the Portrait Boca AI, see, it's grayed out. Now let's talk about the biggest problem with Depler, which might make it absolutely unusable for professional use. Take a look at this example. I've added some wonderful Depler here. And as you can see, Depler is very, very smart. So here's the before, here's the after. Have a look at the background far away. It has blurred it more. Look at the roof right here. It has blurred it less because it's nearby. And also, look at this bush right over here. It has blurred it because it should be out of focus. This focal plane should be in focus. Also, this tree is next to the subject in the same focal plane. Therefore, it is in focus. So as you can tell, depth blur is very, very smart. But there is one major problem. Let's zoom in and take a look. See, there are some inconsistencies in the masking. Let's turn on the blur, right? There are some hair areas which are not selected properly. The problem is, and I underline this, there is no way inside of this module as of now to work on the mask. There is no way to tweak which areas are going to be focused and which areas are going to be blurred. You have to stick with what Photoshop has decided for you. And that's completely against the behavior of what Photoshop is supposed to be. If you scroll around here and there, there is no way I can tell Photoshop, all right, these are the areas that you need to bring back and focus. There's a bag right there. Or there's no way I can tell Photoshop, all right, this doesn't look right. There's not even any way in which we can take a brush and just put those areas back into blur or bring back certain areas in focus, there's no easy way to do that. I know there's a way. The way is you can output this as a depth map and then just load the depth map in Photoshop, work on the depth map, then apply lens blur, bring in that depth map. Yes, you can do that. But then, you know, there should be a way inside of this module to easily tell Photoshop, all right, I don't want this area in focus or I do want that particular area in focus. That's the biggest problem that make this unusable. So here we are in Luminar AI, and as you can tell, it's not that smart, not as smart as Adobe, and it has not even blurred the bushes that are in front of it. But Luminar has an advantage. Also have a look, it has also blurred this particular area, but there's no problem there. Let me share with you what the advantage is, and you already might have guessed it. Have a look, if we zoom in, and if we want to tell Luminar, all right, bring that area back in focus, we can easily do that. Just paint over that area. And it will bring that area back in focus. If you want to remove an area, just select defocus and just remove that area. And it will be defocused. So there is an option for us to work on the mask manually. This is one of those rare situations where Luminar is acting more like Photoshop and Photoshop is acting more like the previous versions of Luminar. So all this concludes that Photoshop has become more smarter, but Luminar on the other hand is more precise and gets the job done. If you are interested in checking out Photoshop or Luminar, both of them are linked up in the description. I believe that Photoshop's new depth blur has definitely gotten to a point where you can use it, but not professionally. If you do want to add professional shallow depth of field effect, going manual is the only way. And we have a video about it, which you can check right over here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.